Hello, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Harry Sirwan. We meet again. Well, before I, you know, I talk about uh, inter international business, right? Um, but now I'm going to talk about corporate finance. As you know, I'm a student at IPMI Business School, right? And uh, this is what I have for what I had for corporate finance from week one up to week seven. Please enjoy. Here is what I have in week one. Um, what is financial management? It's optimal orchestration of internal and external financial resources towards significant and sustainable value creations. And in terms of value creations, McKinsey have at least four, uh, uh, McKinsey introduced four principles. Uh, the first one is core of value principles, where value is driven by return on capital and growth and cash flow. The second one is conservations of value uh, principles. Uh, I mean, you cannot create value by arranging claims on cash flow alone, right? And then the third one is the expectation treatment principles. Um, it's just that um, the more ex investor expect of your share price, the better you must perform to keep up, right? It's like a treadmill going on and on and on, right? Uh, better performance and on and on and continue. And then best owner principle is a business value depends upon its owner's capability. Right, and the next one that we learn is that uh, capital budgeting, capital budgeting. Um, you know, we talk about uh, decisions making criteria in the capital, accept or reject a long term investment proposals. Right, so this is what capital budgeting talks about. So how do uh, capital budgeting decide? So that we used the first one is uh, we estimate um, expected future cash flow, evaluate the project based on capital. Right, and then budgeting evaluation criteria and decide whether or which project is good or bad. And two or more projects can be, you know, mutually exclusive um, or maybe could be independent. So, what method that we use to decide uh, all of those, uh, you know, decide whether a, 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 a project is beneficial for us or not? We have one is a payback period and then net present value, and then profitability index, and also internet rate of return. Unlike uh, net present value, profitability index, internet, and internet rate of return, payback period doesn't consider the value of money in terms of time, right? Net present values, uh, net present values, profitability index, internet rate of returns, they calculate the value of money, uh, you know, that happen later in the future, they, they Calculate it now. So, how, um, the, the, how much is the uh, how much is the value of that money now? You know, instead of um, uh, when we get instead of years in advance when we get the money, right? And then also we have uh, the last one is the principal agent problem, right? The, this is uh, one of the principle that is very important in uh, capital management. Sorry, in this is one of the one one of the principle that is um, important in corporate finance, right? Which is uh, principal agent problem, right? Uh, principal agent problems uh, basically could lead to you know uh, asymmetric informations and then uh, mental hazard and also conflict of interest, which at the end of the day it could lead you know could you know cause could become the cause of uh, corruptions or uh, 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 fraud and so on, right? In order to minimize the principal agent problem, what we need to do is we have to implement a safety, you know, like, uh, for instance, a good corporate governance. You know, uh, if you know, uh, good, co co good corporate governance, you know, consists of five uh, principles, which is um, uh, short for tariff, transparency, accountability, responsibility, independency, and also fairness. In week two, we talk about co a company's value. One of the analysis that we do is that fundamental analysis. How do we do a, 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 a fundamental analysis? Is start from the domestic and global economic analysis and then after that, you know, a bit uh, detailed to, into the industry analysis and then the company analysis. So we have a very good view of what happened in the company, in the industry, as well as in the, uh, you know, in the nation or global economic economy, right? So we don't make any mistake, you know, so we know, so we know all, so we know, 
so we know all the informations needed you know to decide whether we are going to invest on a company or not the second thing that we talk about is intrinsic value against the market price right if you take a look at the stock market right we could uh, sometimes the price is you know overvalue sometimes the price is undervalue now of course the rules is that if the intrinsic value is higher than the market value means you have to you have to buy the stocks or you have to involve in the project you know because it, it, it makes uh, it because it makes profit right and the last one we talk about in week two is about financial statement right there is uh, as we all know there are at least three there are you know at least three financial statement the balance sheets the income sheets and also the cash flow right the balance sheets we have assets liabilities and equ equities right it shows the net worth of the company right the income statement consists of revenue and expense ex expenses it shows how profitable a company is and the last one is the cash flow of course uh, you have cash flow in and cash flow out right and uh, you know you, you could take a look at how much money that the company make you know by this uh, by this state by this uh, financial uh, statement and we have an exciting week three you know we talk about you know we already talk about finance state uh, financial statement in week two but we go deeper again uh, which is going to be very excited in in week three we talk about financial statement analysis right in, in terms of the analysis the financial statement is divided into at least five this first one is profitability you know you know return on assets and return on equity and then the second one is liquidity you know current ratio quick ratio right if you are familiar and an activity which is total asset turnover ratio and then fake asset turnover ratio and then leverage debt uh, debt to equity ratio and then time interest earn ratio and also market ratio of course if you are in this if you are a public company you have a stock there is an earning per share ratio and also price earning ratio right so how do we calculate a value of a company based on those ratio one of this one of the tools that we one of the method that we have is what we call is the dupont system right dupont systems you know at the end of the day it talks about return on equity but but it start with you know calculating the net profit margin and then the total asset turnovers which is which convert later on to return on asset and then also we talk about the debt ratio and then after that, um, at the end of the day, we, uh, those two calculates into return on equity. If we have a good return on equity, it means that the value of the company is, you know, great. You can invest in them, right? But you ha one thing that you have to keep in mind is that you need to consider also the competitor and also what happened in the industry. You just don't, you don't take it, you know, the ROE from the company for granted. You have to... Uh, was it compare you know do benchmark you know for for a competitor and then the industry how well does the company you know compare to the competitor and also the industry right so you now uh, for those who are going to you know to the uh, to the stock markets you know in, in this case about ihsg right indonesia right we, we also consider the technical analysis right we have you know momentum versus reversals we, we talk about the uh, trend analysis whether it's going up or it's going down and then also the support and also the resistance right support and resistance are very important you know in in deciding uh, whether you are should we, whether you should invest on that company and, or not and then also we have the gap triangles you know symmetric asymmetric double bottom double top right and then head and shoulders you know these are all uh, patterns you know that shows uh, whether you should buy or you should uh, you know sell right of, co of course uh, moving average also uh, Fibonacci Fibonacci and and so on in week four we look deeper on the company uh, at their capital structures you know as you know capital structures is liabilities and equity right and there is um, you know um, a ben a benefits you know if you are engaged in their financings right one of them is also uh, it's always tax dedab de deductible and then what happened at the end of the day is that company try to balance the cost and the benefits of that to reach the optimal mix that maximize the value of the firm 
Of course, there are effects on cost of capital, right? Uh, since the debt is cheaper than, uh, you know, the equity, use of that will lower the uh, weighted average cost of a capital. At the high levels of debt, the weighted average cost of capital will increase at advanced investor perceive the firm to be riskier. So using that, you know, they have benefits, but also there are risks, you know, um, you know, coming to the uh, company if you know solely focus on the debt for uh, as their uh, uh, capital right so and then how do we calculate uh, a company uh, risk you know we use a portfolio uh, theory right uh, we have risk uh, where total risk is equal systematic risk plus, uh, plus unsystematic risk Systematic risk is what we know as the uh, interest rate, uh, the central bank interest rates, for example. Right? In unsystematic risk is the risk of the industry, risk of the company itself, right? And also, in order for you know for you to uh, manage that risk, you could do a correlation or diversifications of the uh, of the uh, portfolio. So you not just you know uh, invest on one company and then uh, invest on the Another company, but at the same industry, that would be uh, too risky because the unsystematic risk is going to be uh, there for both of the company, right? So, how do we calculate this? Uh, first, we are ha we are using the capital capital asset uh, pricing uh, pricing model, which is the um, systematic risk uh, plus um, the average of uh, market return, right? Uh, and then uh, times the uh, systematic risk times the beta, right? Uh, the beta is uh, tox. The beta itself is about how volatile you know the price is, or how volatility how the volatility of a price uh, of a share you know in the market. You know the the higher the vol the higher the vol volatility is the higher the risk, but the lower the volatility is. Uh, you know, it's also not good because sometimes the lower the volatility means is that the share or the stock is, you know, is not liquid. I mean, it doesn't um, trade much, you know, by the either by the investor, investor or the traders. Then we continue about corporate restructuring. Well, we probably, you know, we don't always need this uh, corporate restructuring, but. At the end of the day, if there is a problem, you know, uh, whether, you know, that cause financial distress, you know, th then we need the corporate restructuring, right? Uh, what kind of financial distress that we're talking about? We're talking about a permanent problem and then also uh, uh, what kind of uh, financial distress is there? First is the permanent problem. You know, the second one is the turnaround opportunity. Uh, we talk about uh, permanent problems. Uh, you just go if, if it is a permanent problem. You just have, you just need to go to the court and declare bankruptcy. But if there is a chance for turnaround opportunity, then you need to go. Then you need to you know uh, do the operation restructuring, or it is uh, asset restructuring or financial uh, restructuring, right? Week five, we continue with the surviving and transforming business, right? Of course, you know, Professor Roy always gave us a, a case study of his own um, personal experience, right, in doing the uh, corporate restructuring. So, what you need to do is that you need to stop the build, uh, the bleeding, right, which uh, department is making the biggest loss, then you have to stop that, right? And then also financial restructuring and then temporary, temporary pivoting, and then also doing a strategically aligning of what is uh, what is uh, profitable and what is not, and align that with the strategic move that a corporate has, and then redefining core business. And also at the end of the day, uh, the company will transform, you know, by having a new ways of doing business. And we also have we also talk about leverage buyout. Uh, Nabisco is one of the uh, Nabisco is one of the examples. This is very um, this is a very interesting case. In week six, in in week six, we continue with the talk of issue in finance, right? Especially uh, corruption, asset misappropriation, and fraudulent statement. This 
is what we call it an occupational fraud and abuse right this things happened due to the what we call as the triangle of occupation we have opportunity realization and also uh, we have op we have opportunity rationalization and also pressures right in other than with a boring system we could have incentive to prevent uh, fraud and also corruptions right type of incentives that we have is the physical right and then the uh, monetary incentive of course the social incentive as well as the uh, moral incentive right and then after that we also talk about international finance right this is very interesting because uh, we talk about uh, foreign exchange markets you know in this case is about uh, exchange rate right uh, we talk about currency future contracts as well as currency call or put options so currency call or put option just give the right you know or for some or in, in a company or institutions you know to buy or sell a specific currency at a specific fry, the, the price within a specific period of time so this could be used to minimize you know it could minimize the risk of losing uh, money you know because of the exchange rate right so this is something that you have to uh, consider when you are in the exchange rate right but so we are to also talking about arbitrage you know um, arbitrage is a bit different from speculation speculation is hoping for the price of a of a share of a of a, of a currency you know to go up in you know in the future time right but for every arbitrage uh, in order to make profit um, they have a certain s sure strategy right uh, they are localization lo they are locational triangular and also interest rate right so the locational is where you buy one currency in one place and then sell it in an another place which is of course the uh, this other place is much higher than the uh, first place right that's why you get the benefits right week seven is also an interesting week which because for those who are you know um, an investor or a trader especially in stock we're talking about uh, dividend also and also efficient market theory this is very interesting i'll tell you i'll tell you later paying dividends you know there are three points that uh, there are three few points the first one is dividends are, ir are irrelevant high dividends are best low dividends are best you know of course when a company decides which viewpoint that they choose whether it's dividend or irrelevant high dividends are the best low dividends are the best they have to consider a lot of things you know things that are factors that affecting dividends companies should really consider those first one is the fund liquidity right as we know dividends are uh, uh, dividends are income or profit that is made from the uh, corporate activities right so if you are let's say high dividends are best company right and then you kind of give it all almost all the dividends which could also result in the low liquidity of the company right and also the second one is past dividend rates and then earning stability debt obligations this is you have to consider right? if you have debt you should pay your debt first i think and also investment opportunity right investment opportunity if there is you know like investment opportunity is like expansions you know to another country or expansions to you know vertically or uh, horizontally in business right uh, you know as long as it's you know could create a positive cash flow and uh, uh, increase profit then uh, you should explore the investment opportunity so these are some of the factors that you need to consider you know that you need to consider uh, before you know you are if you are a company before you pay your dividends right and the last one is the most interesting one which is the efficiency market theory now we as a trader or investors you know are ve trying very hard to beat the market but according to this that according to efficiency market theory is that you know the market cannot be beaten because price reflect all available informations right prices reflect all available information so 
some of you may go up some of you may have stocks that is the price going up and then going down but at the end of the day the market reflects all of it you know uh, reflects all the gain that you could have right and this is because of the informations information that support the efficiency market theory there are three kind three types of information the first one historical trading data the third the second one is publicly available information the third one is all private and public informations right so if all these informations are there for the public to see that that's is when we have the efficiency market theory so based on this market theory what uh, we as an investor right, and or a trader what should we do we should at least invest in index fund right we have an index funds already you know in our um, uh, fund uh, in our uh, um, financial market you could just look at it there are a lot of index markets you know uh, by Ben E or by um, Afris and so on and so on and also the dollar cost averaging that's it what I have for from week one to uh, week seven on corporate finance I hope you enjoy it and you know uh, give your uh, comment below uh, what do you think of the video um, and I see you uh, at the next video bye bye